Alright guys, in this example we're dealing with another vector application problem. So let's go ahead and read the problem and then we'll talk about how we're going to set it up. It says an airplane leaves the airport with a direction of south 15 degrees west for 220 miles. It then changes direction and goes south 10 degrees west for 400 miles. Find the distance and direction of the plane from the starting point. So our goal here is to find the distance and direction of the plane from the starting point. Okay, the starting point in this case being the airport. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to set this up. Now, whenever dealing with these vector application problems and direction problems, we want to go ahead and create a coordinate grid. Alright, so that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to go ahead and create our coordinate grid. So we'll just do that to the right here. So creating a coordinate grid, we have the following, right? And now we're going to go ahead and put on our vector. So let's see what the direction is going to be here. It says, right, so it goes south to west, right? That's how we're going to read this direction here, south to west with an angle of rotation of 15 degrees. Okay, so for example, you start south to west, angle of rotation of 15 degrees. So that's going to look the following way, south to west, okay? And then we have an angle of rotation in here of 15 degrees, okay? And we also know, right, the distance here is going to be 220 miles. So we'll just write 220, we know that it's going to be miles. All right, so there's our first vector. We now have to go ahead and put on our second vector. Now, in order to do that, we have to create a second coordinate grid. So let's go ahead and create that. So let's put it right here. Okay, and notice how the tip of my first vector will land in the first quadrant of my second coordinate grid here. All right, so putting this on, we're going to have the following. Right, it says it then changes direction and goes south, okay, 10 degrees west. So again, south to west. That's how we read that with an angle of rotation of 10 degrees. Okay, so essentially we're going to have something that looks like this. Okay. And we know that this is going to be an angle of rotation of 10 degrees. Okay. And it went for 400 miles, so we're just going to put 400 here. Now, before I go ahead and draw on my resultant vector, I first want to find this entire angle in here, All right? So for example, just drawing it out, I want to find this entire angle in here, okay? Because when I draw in that resultant vector, we're essentially going to have a triangle, right? And we'll be able to solve this using the law of cosines because we'll have side, angle, side, all right? So our goal here is to find this angle in here, and let's talk about how we can do this. Right? Well, we know that this is going to be 15 degrees, right? So as a result, this angle in here must also be 15 degrees. Because again, these are alternate interior angles, right? And they're going to be equal because we have a transversal, in this case our vector, passing through two parallel lines, right? So this is going to be 15 degrees here as well, okay? And so if we know that this is going to be 15 degrees, we know this whole angle in here, in this first quadrant, right, going from here to here is going to be 90. So if we simply just do 90 minus 15, that's going to give us our angle in here, right? So if you just simply do 90 minus 15, you're going to get 75, right? So we get 75 here. So we get 75 in here. And then we want to simply just add 90, right? because that's going to be this whole angle in here, and then add 10. And that will be our entire angle, right? So we're going to do 75 plus 90 plus 10. And we're going to get 175 degrees here. 175 degrees. All right, so why don't we go ahead and start labeling this. We'll call this A. We'll call this B. And we'll call this C down here, okay? And we know that angle B is going to be 175 degrees. Let's go ahead and record that. So angle B is 175 degrees. 
Now we can go ahead and put on our resultant vector. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to do that with a dashed line. That way we know it's the resultant vector. So again, starting at the original point and connecting to the tip of our last drawn on vector, okay, we're going to have something that looks like this. Okay, and there it is. So there is our resultant vector. Okay, so essentially what we want to find first is, right, the distance of the plane from the starting point. So at the starting point to where it is now, we need to find this length right here. So if this is angle B, we know that this must be side B because it's opposite to it. All right, so we're going to do this by using the law of cosines. And how it's going to look in this particular case is the following way. We're going to have B squared equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C and then times cosine of angle B. So again, we know that A, C, and B, those are talking about our side lengths. So again, opposite to angle A, this will be side A. Opposite to angle C, this will be side C. And opposite to angle B, that will be side B. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in our values. So we get B squared equal to side A in this case is going to be 400. So 400 squared plus Okay, side C is going to be 220, so 220 squared minus 2 times A, which is 400, times C, which is 220, and then times cosine of angle B, which is 175 degrees. All right, so we're going to go ahead and plug this into our calculator and see what B squared equals. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get 400 squared plus 220 squared minus 2 times 400 times 220 and then times cosine of 175 degrees. All right, so we get the following. We're going to go ahead and round. So we get 383, 383, 730, we get 0.27, okay? So our last step, take the square root on both sides. So square root of our answer here, so B is going to be equal to 619, we'll say 0.46, this is miles, okay? So this is the distance of the plane from the starting point, so again, going from here to where it is now, it's going to be 619.46 miles. Now, our next step is to find its direction, right, from the starting point. So essentially what they're looking for here is the following. Looking at your resultant vector, they want to know what this angle in here is going to be, right? They want to know what that angle in there is going to be. Well, we have the entire angle. We know it's going to be 15 degrees, right? So if we can get the angle inside this triangle, in this case, angle A, right, all we have to do is do 15 minus angle A, and that's going to give me, right, this part in here, which is going to be the direction of the plane from the starting point. All right, so we're going to use the law of sines to do this. So we're going to have the following. We'll use sine, and in this case, okay, we'll use angle B, so sine of 175 degrees, over the opposite, which we determined was 619.46 equal to, right? And we're trying to find um, angle A here, so sine of angle A, over the opposite, which is going to be 400. Okay, so at this point, we can go ahead and just plug this into our calculator. So doing that, we get sine of 175 degrees divided by 619.46 times 400. So essentially we get the following here. We get sine of angle A is going to be equal to 0 0.0528. Right, and then in order to get angle A, we take inverse sine. So angle A is going to be equal to inverse sine 
and we get 0 0.0528. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. So inverse sine of what we got, and we're going to get 3.22. So angle A here is going to be equal to 3. Point, and we can go ahead and round it, we'll say 2, 3. And again, this is going to be degrees. Okay. So, our last step, right? We know the entire angle in here is going to be 15. So I'm going to do 15 minus angle A. And that will give me that resultant angle right here. Okay? So doing that, we'll just go ahead and plug it into our calculator. I'll write it up here. So we're doing 15 degrees minus angle A, which is 3.23 degrees, right? So 15 minus... 3.23, right? And we get the following here. We get 11.77, all right, degrees. So our resultant angle here is going to be 11.77 degrees. Now, we want to go ahead and put this on as a direction. So we're going to say the following. Again, we're going south to west. So we're doing south, right, 11 Point seven seven degrees west. Okay, so here is going to be our direction right here. Okay, and that is it.